first official Google Foldable is here. This is the Pixel Fold, and its arrival is a big deal. It means Google will finally optimize Android for foldables, and it also means Google is casting its bets on this form factor. The phone promises to be the thinnest foldable out there, as well as the one with the best camera. All of these are plausible, but how does it fare in the real world? Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker, and over the last decade, I've made it my job to show people around the world that tech can be easy, fun, and exciting. On this channel, I give you special access to the products I review, the events I attend, and all the interesting people I get to meet along the way. So if foldable phones are your down, give this channel a subscribe and this video a like, and I'll help you find the right device to match your needs. This is my Pixel Fold review. This is the new Pixel Fold, Google's first foldable smartphone. It's both a 5.8 inch smartphone and a 7.6 inch compact tablet. So it's not too thin, not too tall. Actually, this form factor, it's great. I've always disliked how narrow the Galaxy Z Fold is when closed. It's a pain when you wanna text or compose an email. That's why I've gravitated towards the Oppo Find N2, mainly because it's wider, making it much more usable while closed and still very pocketable. For some though, with its squarish aspect ratio, the Find N2 is too small to enjoy as a tablet. The Pixel Fold offers a good mix of both. Like the Oppo's, it's wide enough to comfortably use while closed, but because it's taller when you open it up, its screen is larger. A great size for tablet use, and about the same size if you rotate the Z Fold 4. In the week testing the Pixel Fold, I have used it mainly closed to do most everyday things, like responding to texts or emails, surfing the web, perusing social media, taking photos. I did all of that quite comfortably with the screen closed. The larger screen, though, comes in handy when work gets more serious. When you want to multitask and have two windows open, for example, it's so easy to drag and drop photos from my gallery to an email or message, or like I love to do on my computer, have Google Doc open on one side and a browser window on the other. Or maybe you're checking out a new recipe and want to have your Google Keep shopping list on one side. More on multitasking later. Pixel devices are known for their cool editing features too, like Magic Eraser, and the larger screen is perfect for that also. I also love reading ebooks, and this is also the perfect aspect ratio for using my Kindle app, which syncs progress with any book I'm reading on my Kindle Oasis. For me, when it comes to foldables, my expectation is that I have two devices and I want a great experience both when the phone is closed and the phone is open. And in the time that I've spent with the Pixel Fold, I'm happy to report that this device works great open and it works great closed. So we're off to a great start. Before we continue, here's a brief message from this video's sponsor. Not too long ago when I traveled to San Francisco, my credit card somehow got hacked. I woke up one day to find that my bank had suspended all of my accounts, all because I connected to public Wi-Fi. Since then, I've been extra diligent about using a VPN whenever I'm out and about, like this video's sponsor, Private Internet Access. They help protect my data from hackers, and they can be anywhere, at cafes, planes, lounges, or hotels, places where I spend a lot of working hours. With private internet access, my internet connection is encrypted so that my personal data is protected. Because I travel a lot, a VPN service ensures that I can watch the content that I want to watch, no matter where I am in the world. The critically acclaimed movie Triangle of Sadness, for example, is available to stream for free on Hulu, which is only accessible in the US. So while on the app, I just click on the PIA button, switch to another server, and I'm connected. Or when I'm home, I can watch Harry Potter movies by switching to this Australian server, since it's no longer available on Netflix US. Get private internet access today at 83% off. That's just a little over $2 a month. Plus you get four months free. It's available on every platform so all your devices can be protected. I'll put all the links in the description box below. Mm -hmm. 
The Pixel Fold comes in two colors, obsidian, which is dark gray, and porcelain, which is a light champagne. Both have a matte frosted finish with color matched polished stainless steel hinges. I had the privilege of using both colors and porcelain is the one I've ordered for myself. It's the standout color of the two, but caveat, it's only exclusively available from Google. If you purchase it from a carrier, Obsidian is your only option. You know me, I'm not usually a fan of black phones and the darker finish shows fingerprints more easily. That said, the matte finish does a decent job of hiding them. And it's a step up from the glossy finish on the Pixel 7 series. Speaking of the rest of the Pixel line, the Fold has the same large camera camera bar as its siblings, giving it that distinctive Pixel look that fits right in with the rest of the family. The sides of the Pixel Fold are rounded, making them extremely comfortable to hold, and its size, perfect for any pocket. Props to Google for impressively managing to make this phone so thin, and that's thanks in part to the hinge design, which we will cover next. But while we're on the topic of design, my biggest complaint is button placement. You see, the volume rocker is where my finger normally sits, so say I'd want to open it up, I almost always press it down. Even on the smaller Oppo Find N2, the button is higher up, leaving the space free. Take a look at the Pixel Fold side-by-side -side with the Oppo Find N2 and the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. Notice how much thinner it is. That's thanks to an interesting new hinge design called the friction hinge. Whereas most manufacturers build the hinge mechanism underneath the display, the hinge mechanism on the Pixel Fold is off to the side or you could say up top and on the bottom. Now, this comes with its set of pros and cons. Pros, obviously, it's much thinner, and it's virtually gapless, meaning it's less prone to dust and dirt trapped underneath. Compare that to the Fold 4, which has a large gap on one end, and the Find N2, which closes shut, but still has a bit of a gap. Having no air gap is so important, especially when it comes to devices that have screens that are so fragile. Now, speaking of durability, the Pixel Fold also has an IPX8 rating, which is the highest form of water resistance when it comes a device can achieve. Now let's talk con. And first we're going to zoom in to that big bezel around the inner display because the mechanism is off to the sides. Notice these cams on the top and bottom ends of the device. A week into use, and I'm still not a fan of this big bezel, it makes the phone feel like a prototype. Also, for some reason, it doesn't feel like the screen opens all the way to 180 degrees. It's like it's missing two degrees. If you're willing to overlook the aesthetic, that also means that you don't have to deal with that inferior under display selfie camera, and you get room to hold the device without interfering with the display. Google says the hinge was designed so that the Pixel Fold will stay open at any angle and that it would close with a satisfying thump. Speaking of noises, this is where I have to talk about a problem that I encountered. Google sent me a review device early, as you can see from this unboxing video I shot last week. And in this clip from my unboxing, I was surprised to hear that it made a cracking sound since the very first time I opened it. I informed my Google PR rep and they were kind enough to send me a replacement and I was hoping that this would be a one-off case. However, just the other day, I saw this tweet from my buddy Ray Wong, who is a reviewer at Inverse.com. Turns out he experienced the same issue and he sent me this clip. His experiences are documented in his review and like him, I hope that this isn't a widespread issue. However, it does kind of remind me of the first time Samsung sent out review devices for the original Galaxy Fold. Because many reviewers were experiencing problems, they had to issue a recall and that kind of delayed their launch date. Google claims that this hinge is supposed to be the most durable of any foldable, but only time will tell. Lastly, let's talk about the screen and the crease. Something about opening up the phone, especially outdoors, gives off this cheap feeling. I've kept that thought to myself, but many reviews came out today and 
Surprisingly, a lot of people feel the same way. It's something, however, I can't quite put a finger on. It's also not bright enough, even if on paper it should be. I struggle to see the display on a bright sunny day out, taking photos at New York's little island. And now, the crease. Obviously, it's a foldable, so it's there. It's a little bit wider, but definitely not as deep as Galaxy Z Fold 4. I was curious, though, if I was too critical as a YouTuber, so I had Chai do a blind test. You'll see from this video. Obviously, there was no blind test, but we can trust her. And she described the Fold 4 as having the deepest crease. The Find N2 is having the best feel, and the Pixel Fold is being right there in the middle. And that pretty much matches what I feel with maybe less objective eyes and fingers. Normally on Android phones, you'll find this white bar at the bottom of each app, and when you swipe on it, you go home. This white bar is also present on the Pixel Fold, and if you swipe on it just a little less than you normally would, you'll bring up the taskbar, the key to multitasking on a Pixel Fold. With an app already open, you can summon the taskbar and from there launch another app. Just drag the app from the dock to whichever side of the screen you want it to go. Don't worry about it though, you can reorder the windows around by double tapping right here in the middle. If you switch to another app, the app pair you just created will also remain available for you to quickly access. And since we're comparing on the Galaxy Z Fold 4, you have the option to have floating windows. Over two windows you have on split screen mode. You can't do that on the Pixel Fold. Google does make an effort to present this new foldable centric SKU of Android as ready and intentional. For example, a quick swipe down from the home screen utilizes the screen real estate smartly. So you get quick settings on the left and all of your notifications on the right. Google apps also offer two column experiences like on Gmail or Calendar, but those aren't necessarily new. It's default behavior on the Find N2, and on the Galaxy Z Fold 4, you need to rotate your device first. Overall though, Android for foldables doesn't seem quite ready for prime time. Features like Translator, letting you use the inside and outside displays for real-time conversations with someone in another language, are coming soon. Other stuff that works out of the box on other foldables, like being able to show the person you're taking photos of a live preview of what the camera sees, just doesn't work on the Pixel. Here's another one. Usually with phones that you can prop up to take selfies with, a hand gesture signals the camera to take the photo. On the Pixel Fold, this only works if you turn on timer mode to three or 10 seconds. Even worse, if you wanna go back to taking photos the normal way, you're still stuck in timer mode until you manually set it back. It's these odd software quirks about the Pixel Fold that have left me a little bit disappointed. The reason I was most excited about it was because my biggest issue with foldables today is that Android isn't optimized for it. I hope these problems just exist because this is the start and that the OS and the ecosystem improves or catches up real soon. The home screen is another example. There's no way to have a different layout on the inside screen. Your front screen just mirrors your apps and widgets. Where foldables are concerned, I think manufacturers need to give users different experiences on the outside screen as well as the inside screen, not just a mirror. I think the whole point of foldables is to give users two distinct experiences, so manufacturers should definitely keep that in mind. Now, that said, there's still a lot to love about Pixel OS or Android on a Pixel. Exclusive features like call screening, now playing, and the ability to transcribe voice notes, it's all there. The Pixel Fold is packed with a 4,821 milliamp hour battery, which is larger than the other two foldables I considered while working on this review. To squeeze that much battery into a device, Google has placed separate battery cells on each side of the device. In my time with the Pixel Fold, I was able to squeeze in a full day of use, and that's probably because I use the outer display more often. There is no charger in the box, and the phone tops up at 21 watt charging, but for our gadget 
Match Charge Test, I use the optional $25 30 watt adapter that Google sells. And here are the results. 17% after 10 minutes, 47% after 30 minutes, an hour long charge gets you to 80%. The Pixel Fold also supports wireless charging, but not Google's fast kind. Unlike the Galaxy Z Fold, there's also no reverse wireless charging, but that's not a feature I lose sleep over. Because foldable phones don't have a big chassis for components, you can expect that there's not enough space to be able to pack in complex camera systems to make them competitive with their bigger brothers. Say the Pixel Fold versus the Pixel 7 Pro. But I was still hoping that it lives up to its lineage and offers the best set of cameras we've seen on a foldable. And we'll get there, but first let's go over what you get. On the outside, there's a 10.8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 48 megapixel main camera and a 5x telephoto lens. All right, let's start with something easy, a flower. Actually, bright red and pink flowers are not so easy for many phones. While the Galaxy Fold produced the more vibrant photo, the Pixel Fold captured better detail. But as you can see in this next photo of a pride flag, the Galaxy Fold consistently puts out punchier colors. It's not as obvious in this shot of some cute stickers over a graffiti wall, but it's safe to say that in general, the Pixel Fold Fold's photos are more muted. It could be the way that Google chooses to render color because here are the same shots taken with the Pixel 7 Pro, but actually in this photo of me, the Pixel 7 Pro still produces better color, but not as vibrant as the Galaxy Fold. We're going to switch to some low light shots soon, but first a few more points. The Fold 4 has a wider ultra wide angle camera as can be seen in one of my favorite photo spots of a cause statue, but the Fold 4 only goes to 3x versus 5X on the Pixel Fold, as can be seen in these photos. All right, some low light shots. The first at this cool cocktail bar in Greenpoint. I think all phones did a great job here. The cocktail was good too. Two more low light comparisons. This time let's throw in the Oppo Find N2. First up, a shot of Chai, and it's obvious that in low light, the Pixel Fold doesn't do as well. Chai still comes out clear, but the photo just isn't as bright. Dare I say the Find N2 does the best job. Lastly, a shot of my A7S, which is the camera I use to film all my videos. All phones did a great job of producing that creamy bokeh using the lights from the Manhattan skyline. The Pixel Fold did an excellent job here, even adjusting the white balance a little. Overall, I think the Pixel Fold cameras are good, but not the best among foldables as I had hoped for. That said, enjoy some standout clips from a Pixel Fold photo walk in New York. Anybody? <laughs> go, go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> While the flip form factor is better for propping up your phone to take photos, the friction hinge on the Pixel Fold allows you to prop it up for things like time lapses. And this is a sample that I shot. As well as pointing it up at the sky to use the phone's astrophotography mode. So, is the Pixel Fold your gadget match? Because we don't live in a vacuum, it's also worth pointing out that Samsung is about to launch the Galaxy Z Fold 5 at the end of July. I hear that OnePlus is also planning to announce a new foldable OnePlus device. So watch this space, especially if you live in the US where up until recently, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 was the only foldable that one get. The Pixel Fold came with high expectations, and while there is a lot to love about it, I 
don't think they hit the mark, especially since at $17.99, Google is asking as much as Samsung is for the Fold 4. And the Fold, apart from now going on five iterations, also offers other things like stylus support. All these things notwithstanding, I think it was a great first effort from the Pixel team. And for what it's worth, I've already pre-ordered my Pixel Fold. It's coming tomorrow, hopefully, in porcelain. And I do intend on keeping it and using it. That should tell you that I actually enjoyed my time reviewing the device. Speaking of my order, I also ordered a Pixel case in porcelain to match my fold, but I saw a blue one out in the wild and might pick one up too. Google is known to make excellent cases for their smartphones. And that was my Google Pixel Fold review. I can't believe we finally have an official foldable phone from Google and I know it's only been six days so maybe in a month or two or maybe even more after using my own Pixel Fold I can kind of put together more thoughts and come back to you. If that's something you'd like to see make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we publish. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff and for news and updates make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.